Welcome to this quick start video for the Modolithics Complete Library for Keysight ADS. In this quick start video, we'll go over several topics. First, we'll explain what is the Modolithics Complete Library. We'll also explain why Modolithics models are important. We'll discuss our microwave global models, which represent Modolithics unique approach to modeling, and we'll offer procedures and tips for using Modolithics models in a project. So what is the Modolithics Complete Library? The Modolithics Complete Library is Modolithics' premier product. It's a large collection of simulation models for both passive and active RF and microwave components. The Complete Library consists of various sub-libraries, such as the CLR Library. The CLR Library is a collection of capacitor, inductor, and resistor models. This library contains the microwave global models that will be discussed later. The complete library also includes the NLT library, a collection of nonlinear transistor models, as well as the NLD library, a collection of nonlinear diode models. Also included is the SLC, or System Level Component Library. This library contains models for components like filters, amplifiers, attenuators, and more. The complete library also includes the substrate library and the SPAR library. The substrate library is a collection of substrate property definition blocks for various substrates, while the SPAR library is a collection of S-parameter file-based models. Another benefit of the Modolithics Complete Library is that it comes with various example projects that can help users get up and running with the models. Before elaborating further on the Complete Library, let's take a moment to discuss some other library options that Modolithics offers. First, there's the CLR library, which contains all of Modolithics capacitor, inductor, and resistor models. Modolithics also offers the millimeter wave and 5G library, which is a collection of models that are validated to at least 30 gigahertz. Some of these models are validated all the way to 125 gigahertz. Then there's the single vendor sub library. A single vendor sub library gives you access to all of the models from one specific vendor. For example, let's say you're interested in using CoilCraft models. The CoilCraft single vendor sub library would give you access to all of the Modolithics CoilCraft models. You may also want to take advantage of the Exemplar library. The Exemplar library is a representative subset of the complete library. It's intended to be an effective tool for evaluation and educational purposes. The Exemplar Library is Modolithic Standard Trial Library. It includes all of the same example projects that come with the complete library. Finally, the Select Plus Library is a smaller subset of all the models in the complete library. The Select Plus Library can be downloaded for free from the Modolithics website. For more information on any of these, please contact sales at modolithics.com. So now, getting back to the complete library, we'll discuss Modolithics Microwave Global Models. Microwave Global Models are models for surface mount capacitors, inductors, and resistors. A single Microwave Global Model covers the full range of part values for a vendor component series. In addition to being part value scalable, Microwave global models scale with respect to substrates and solder pads, providing designers with a great deal of flexibility. These models allow for statistical simulations, discrete part value optimizations, and more. Of course, the complete library provides more than just passive component models. As mentioned, the complete library also contains both nonlinear transistor and nonlinear diode models. Models are available for various HEMT, MOSFET, and BJT transistors, among others. Models are also available for various PIN, Shockey, Varactor, and Step Recovery diodes. System level component and S parameter file based models are also included in the complete library. The system level component, or SLC library, contains linear and nonlinear models for system level components like amplifiers, attenuators, filters, switches, and transformers. 
Many of these models are substrate scalable. It should also be pointed out that the amplifier models in this library are nonlinear behavioral models that allow for much more than just S-parameter simulations. The SPAR library contains S-parameter file-based models for components like amplifiers, filters, transformers, and more. SPAR models are more advanced than traditional S-parameter files, as many contain multiple S-parameter data files that correspond to different part values, substrates, or bias conditions. So now, we'll demonstrate how to use monolithics models in ADS. In this demo, we'll show you how to add a monolithics library to an ADS workspace. We'll explain how models are organized in the component palette list. Various model parameters, such as sim mode and pad mode, will be discussed, and we'll go over discrete parameters and discrete optimization. We'll also introduce you to other features like solder mask and solder paste. In the demo, we'll also show you how to access model data sheets within ADS. Model data sheets contain a model features box, a technical notes section, and much more. We'll also show you how to access the built-in example projects and application notes. Finally, we'll point you to the user manual and release notes, and we'll show you how to navigate our website to access a model list, relevant literature, and the support page. For this demo, we'll assume the Modelytics complete library is already installed and the license is properly configured. If you need assistance setting up your Modelytics license, please refer to our licensing video. So now, after opening an ADS workspace like you see here, we recommend loading the Modelytics libraries by adding them to your list of favorite design kits. To do so, click the Design Kits tab, and then select Manage Favorite Design Kits. Next, click Add Library Definition File, and then go to the C Modelytics Library folder. Now you'll see folders for all of the Modelytics libraries. Here we'll select the CLR library and then we'll select the lib.defs file. To add the other libraries, you would simply repeat the same steps. So now, you can see that we've loaded all of the libraries to our workspace. We have the CLR, NLD, and NLT libraries. We also have the SLC, SPAR, and Substrate libraries. In addition, we've loaded the Select Plus library. Of course, you don't necessarily have to load every library, just whatever you need for your design. After opening a new schematic, you'll see the Modelytics models in the component palette list on the left. The models can be easily recognized by the MDLX identifier. Notice how the models are organized by vendor and part type. For example, Johansson capacitors, Johansson inductors, MACOM diodes, and so on. Alternatively, you can select the Modelytics models via the library browser. If you want to search only for Modelytics models, you can type Modelytics into the search box above the vendor category. You can then sort the Modelytics models appropriately, or you can narrow down your search by using additional search boxes. For example, let's say you want to search for Coilcraft 0805 inductors. You can type that into the search box above the component category to see a list of models that match what you're looking for. As an example, Let's select the AVX capacitor models. Now, 
you can see the many models offered for different AVX capacitor families. Here, we'll select the CAP AVX 0402-004 model. This is a microwave and global model for the AVX 0402 U-series capacitor family. This model covers a capacitance range of 0.2 to 30 picofarads. You can double click a model to see its parameters. The C parameter that you see at the very top allows you to specify the capacitance. Alternatively, you can specify the capacitance via the C underscore discrete parameter. Here, you'll see a drop-down list that contains the actual vendor part values for the model. By default, this parameter is set to continuous, which means that the part value is set to the value of the C parameter. However, once you set the C underscore discrete parameter to an actual value, that value overrides the value of the C parameter. The C underscore discrete parameter also allows you to perform discrete optimizations. The discrete optimization feature is very useful because it allows you to perform optimizations in which the part value is set to the optimal vendor part value. For more on discrete optimizations, you can check out our example schematic that demonstrates this feature. Of course, everything discussed doesn't apply to only capacitor models. The same concepts also apply to inductor and resistor models. So we'll select the model for the Coilcraft 0402 AF inductor series. You can see the L underscore discrete parameter, which covers an inductance range of 20 to 560 nanohenries. Now, we'll discuss SIM mode and PAD mode, which are two parameters you should be aware of. We'll start with SIM mode. There are four different SIM mode settings. When SIM mode is set to zero, the model functions as a full parasitic model. With SIM mode zero, the model accounts for internal device parasitics as well as substrate and solder pad effects. This means that solder pads are included within the model. When SIM mode is set to 1, the model simply functions as an ideal model. When SIM mode is set to 1, device parasitics and substrate and solder pad effects are all removed from the model. SIM mode 2 is the no pad stacks mode. SIM mode 2 is similar to SIM mode 0. However, the one difference is that with SIM mode 2, solder pad effects are removed from the model. This allows you to simulate solder pads within an EM simulator. SIM mode 2 does account for device parasitics and substrate effects. Lastly, when SIM mode is set to 3, the model functions as a simplified parasitic model. With SIM mode 3, Solder pad effects are again removed from the model. In addition, substrate effects are removed. However, the model still does account for internal device parasitics. SIM mode 3 may be useful for multi-layer applications as well as other scenarios. The pad mode setting controls how the solder pads render in the layout. Pad mode does not affect the simulation, only the layout. There are three different pad mode settings. When pad mode is set to zero, the model defaults to the sim mode setting. When pad mode is set to one, the pads always render in the layout, while in pad mode two, the pads never render in the layout. Now getting into some other parameters, you can specify the tolerance here and down here, you'll see the solder mask and the solder paste parameters. You should take note of these if you're using ADS to generate layouts for fabrication. The solder mask parameter allows you to add a solder mask layer to the layout, while the solder paste parameter lets you add a solder paste template layer to the layout.
You can access the model datasheet by clicking the Help button. Every Modelithics model comes with its own datasheet. You'll see here a Model Features box, which shows the validated frequency range and other information. Scroll down and you'll find a technical notes section, which tells you how measurements were made and more. And scroll further down and you'll find modeled and measured data plots for different part values using different substrates. As mentioned earlier, the Modelithics Complete Library comes with various example projects. These are located in the C Modelithics Examples for Keysight ADS folder. The example workspaces are organized by library. In addition, you'll see an App Notes folder that contains various application notes. Many of these also have an associated workspace. Also located in the C Modelithics folder is the Documentation folder. There you'll find the user manual and the latest release notes. Finally, you can visit the support page on our website where you can download diagnostic tools, review frequently asked questions, and more. You can also see a list of all models on the Keysight ADS page within the MVP section of the website. And don't forget to check out the literature section where you can read application notes, published articles, white papers, and more. Well, we hope you enjoyed this quick start video. Please let us know if you have any questions or if we may be of assistance.